I mean jet fuel. Oh yeah. But they might have known that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay, we're getting this now. You know what's really scary? This occurred at 8:45 a.m. on September. What's the date, Justin? Uh, I don't know. September 10th. It's a Monday. Or no, it's a Tuesday, September 11th, and we are at Water Street Dorm in apartment 2915A, looking at the World Trade Center building, where reportedly a plane has crashed into it. I actually witnessed this. I was staring right at it when it happened. I did not see a plane, though the building directly across from me might have blocked my view. It's only struck one of the buildings. The other building appears to not have been... Holy fuck! Holy fuck! That's a fucking terrorist, you... Holy shit! Okay, I'm shutting this camera off now. Maybe we should leave? By one aircraft, that would be American Flight 11. Now look at the plane coming in the middle. Oh, what a picture! That plane hit the second building at a much lower level. First plane hit very high up on the one tower, maybe floor 90 or above. Second plane at what? I don't know, maybe floor 71, 71, 71 and up. Yeah. You may want to run that videotape again. This we just got into our news newsroom, this videotape. And not long after this, first one and then the other of these towers collapsed. And now we've had building seven of the World Trade Center where Solomon Brothers, Smith Barney, uh, had their headquarters. We're going to re-rack that videotape and show it to you again. Uh, as we do the re-racking, say that we don't have uh, any confirmed figures on the number of people killed at the Pentagon or the number of people wounded there in Washington where a hijacked plane hit. We have no idea of, of the New York fatalities. Here again is this photograph. The building on the left is about to be hit by the hijacked incoming plane. Ball of flame envelops the second of the World Trade Center towers. Oh, no. oh, Untold death and destruction. As after being hit by the second plane, the second tower eventually collapsed after the you know, both of these twin towers collapsed. Now building seven in the World Trade Center after being evacuated, we're told, collapsed. In the de debris below, people still trapped. This is new videotape that had not been seen before. Dateline Washington, the Pentagon now says, and we've checked and double-checked this, 100 people believed killed or injured. There's no differentiation. We still don't know how many killed, how many injured at the Pentagon, but the Defense Department says its best available information is 100 people believed killed or injured at the Pentagon. And while the Pentagon symbolically was one of the two targets today, that the death, the wounding, and the damage at the Pentagon, nothing to compare with what's happened with the World Trade Center complex. Paramedics waiting to be sent into the rubble today were told that once the smoke clears, it's going to be massive bodies, quote, unquote. That's Brian Stark, an ex-Navy paramedic who volunteered to help. Stark said paramedics were told that, quote, hundreds of police and firefighters are missing from the ranks of those sent in to respond to the initial crash. Now, mind you, this is only one person speaking. Uh, New York police and firemen rushed to the scene this morning, as is their destiny when they volunteer for such work. Uh, they place themselves in harm's way. And it has been thought throughout the day that certainly some police and firemen uh, would turn up missing. And according to this paramedic, he says he was told quote, that hundreds of police and firefighters are missing. 
Let me caution you, we do not know that for a fact. And as we've said repeatedly, and I say again now without apology, sometimes the first information you get from the scene turns out to be wrong information. We do our best to nail down the facts. We'd rather be last with information than be earlier this morning. Watch this. This is, I haven't seen this before. I'm seeing it for the first time as you do. The first building hit at high, at high floor by the first plane is in smoke. The second building has just been hit by the plane. The whole building's gone. I beg your pardon. As you, it was the collapse of the first tower. Now let's go back over. This videotape we've not seen before. Jesus! The tower that was hit by the first plane is still standing. It won't be for long. Remember, this all happened this morning between 9 and 11 a.m. In the second building, now you saw, we'll show these videotapes to you in sequence. First, you had the videotape of the plane coming, and it was coming at pretty high speed, much greater speed than the first plane that hit. We have videotape showing the building hit, and then this second videotape taken from some distance of the first of the towers to collapse. Perhaps we can re-rack that videotape at some point. Strange, eerie. I used the word, if it is a word, Dante-esque earlier in the day. How instead of a ball of flame going up and great billows of smoke going upward, they came downward into and toward the earth itself. But that's because of building collapse. Now, this is the collapse, the first of the towers to collapse. We just secured this video. The whole building's gone. The whole building's gone. Indeed. Holy fucking Jesus! We do apologize for the language on the videotape. Um, One can understand uh, people seeing this incredible sight. And when you see this, you're reminded why everyone in authority is saying we should be prepared for eventually finding out many dead, many seriously wounded, and at this hour, as night has not yet fallen, but begins to creep in on New York City. There are people trapped in the rubble. And when the third building collapsed, World Trade Center building number seven, uh, people uh, who are making efforts to save those people in the rubble who are trapped in there, some of those people uh, were in peril as that Trade Center building number seven collapsed within the last hour, hour and a half. Now what you're going to see next is videotape of the second World Trade Center building collapsing from a different view than you've seen it before. This is again new videotape. One of the World Trade Center buildings has already collapsed. The second, the actual first one to hit by the plane is still standing. It is a smoking ruin in its upper floors. These World Trade Center towers have absorbed a tremendous shock of fast-flying airliners. Highly inflammable aviation fuel. The one building has collapsed. And once it starts to go, how quickly it went. These home videos taken from across the way from a place that once had a spectacular view of a spectacular New York skyline. And the smoke told the story. Scott Pelley will bring us up to date on the situation in lower Manhattan. Scott, it's an unsettling moment to see again different views of those buildings collapsing and indeed the aircraft hitting the second building. But what's the situation down there right now? 
Dan, the smoke that you see rising behind me now is from World Trade Center building number seven, which collapsed about 15 minutes ago. This is a, a very large building. It's 47 stories tall, at least half a block wide. This would have been a catastrophe in its own right, Dan. Uh, the building has been on fire all day since the initial attack about an hour ago. I was down there with a CBS News camera crew and we were talking to firefighters and police officers. Building number seven was completely involved in flame. Flames were shooting out of the building. Large panes of glass were falling into the street. The firefighters explained that there was nothing they could do to try to put the fire out because it was just simply far too dangerous. And they warned us an hour ago that the building might collapse. And indeed, that is what has come to pass. Apparently, some of the city's emergency operations were located in that building. The fire department is telling us now that they have lost some of their communications at this point. The building, of course, being on fire, being at the scene of the attack, had been evacuated much, much earlier. There was no one in the building at the time that it collapsed about 15 minutes ago. However, I will tell you that when we left there an hour ago, there were several New York City police officers and firefighters down there making sure that no one else came into the area. Dan? Scott Pelley on the scene reporting live uh, from Lower Manhattan. Now we're going to show you again videotape of World Trade Center Building 7. This is the one that just collapsed within the last hour and a half, uh, two hours at the outside. This was a 47-story tall building. Uh, this is a scene on the ground just after this building came tumbling down and yet new bellows of the horrible smoke and the stench from the smoke began to fill lower manhattan all anew I'm going to re-rack this videotape uh, for you because we're, what, what we intend to show you, and we have on videotape, is the collapse that World Trade Center uh, building number seven, which housed uh, Solomon Brothers and Smith Barney. I look away because our friend here who's an eyewitness and who worked in the building. And by the way, let's get a picture of another, you know, he wouldn't call himself a hero. But here's a man in our studio who's given us some eyewitness reports here today who calmly got together, led people out of the building, it was his responsibility, he took it upon himself to get people out and then get himself out. Uh, was there actual panic as you did then? There were panic among the staff, yes. Uh, but uh, the important thing, everybody got out on time before. Mm -hmm. Well, you won't say it, but I will. You got everybody out. Yeah. Uh, David Martin is outside the Pentagon, David. <clears throat> Dan, the, uh, the U.S. is trying to do uh, two very different things here simultaneously. One is to hunker down and button up and protect against the possibility of still another attack. And that's why uh, the Pentagon has put all of its uh, bases on the highest state of alert. And the State Department has put all American embassies around the world on the highest state of alert. But at the same time, the U.S. wants to create an impression, at least, of a quick return to normalcy, and that is one of the reasons why the president is coming back to Washington tonight. You know, he spent the day uh, moving about uh, from a military base to military base as much as he would in the event of a, uh, a nuclear war. Um, that now is ended, and they are uh, bringing the president back to Washington to try and create this impression of a return to normalcy. But obviously, as you can see behind me, we are a long, long way from normal. One of the obvious questions here is, who did this? And the early suspicions are focused on Osama bin Laden, the uh, terrorist who has, seems to have made it his life's calling to attack Americans around the world. And in this case, I think, uh, in contrast to previous cases, there is very little doubt that there will be some form of military retaliation. What form it will take and when it might happen, I think it's much too early to uh, tell, but I think uh, it is all but inevitable. Hello.
looks like, and we're getting initial reports, that it looks like a plane crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. I heard the plane very close to the top of the building. Test, 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 test. Oh, Oh, oh plane or something hit the World Trade Center. I'm sorry, do you know? Some have at the World Trade Center. It's not good. Mike and I are here. Yeah, we're both standing here. We're looking right at it. Some of the upper floors, it, it almost looks like somebody intended to do that. See the pieces falling, Mike? Stuff is still falling. Let's get out of here. Mike, we're going to kill. Oh, sh**. What is it, Mike? That's somebody falling. What? Oh, You're my God. I thought we just fell. It is horrific. A second plane the size of a passenger jet flying into the second tower of the of the World Trade Center. Oh my god. They're going into uh, what they call an Archangel operation, which is a code name for uh, essentially a major lockdown of the city. I saw what was like this enormous explosion in the sky, which must have been the first tower going down. The FBI is already investigating reports that a plane was actually hijacked. The city is ordering a major evacuation from a number of public buildings and a number of these very high profile targets. There it goes, it's going. It's going down now, it's going down now. There it collapses. Oh. And the second plane flew directly into the uh, right side of the building. Hit, uh, head on shot, right into the side of the building. I mean, we have a huge hole. We have, we have a lot of dead American people up here. I start to leave when I see people jumping <laughs> on the top of the World Trade Center. I was supposed to be on the 82nd floor for a 9 o'clock meeting, so I guess I was kind of covered by somebody up above. We stop on 68, and I hear people screaming, and there's women huddled in the doorway, and then there's a woman in a wheelchair. Some reporter's interviewing me, and I'm standing next to John, and when the top of the thing blew up, and it just exploded, so I come down, I was running for my life. So were thousands of others trying to scramble out of the downtown financial district, some standing stunned, talking into their cell phones as shoes and briefcases and paperwork that was blown to smithereens rained down from the towers. One witness described a man and woman holding hands, jumping from one of the buildings near the 80th floor. And now another story out of Washington that the Pentagon was the target of another plane. What you can see over my shoulder is the headquarters of our military establishment. That's right, the Pentagon. Uh, it is on fire, although I should say that the firefighters have done a commendable job in knocking down that fire. Uh, there have been uh, many times when the fires have flared up again, but it appears as if at this point they seem to have it pretty well under control, which is critical because we've been told that there are a number of fatalities in the building and that rescue personnel have yet to be able to get to those people. Effectively, the District of Columbia has been shut down. We are under a state of emergency, which means essential personnel only in and out of the city. Yeah, as a member of the Armed Services Committee, we had uh, breakfast with Secretary Rumsfeld this morning. And I, uh, I feel very fortunate uh, that uh, I left about uh, 10 minutes before the, uh, the, the aircraft impacted on the side of the Pentagon. How, how is the city responding right now? Well, it's a city under siege. Uh, I think we've uh, suffered uh, our first uh, terrorist uh, uh, Pearl Harbor here. United Airlines Flight 93 uh, crashed in Pennsylvania. It was speculated by some of the military that this plane may have been uh, commandeered by terrorists. I'm on a flight from Newark to San Francisco, and there are three guys that have taken over the 
the plane and they say they have a bomb. And I, I said, Mark, who are they? I said, Mark, well, I love you too. And I said, who are these guys? And then he seemed to be pulled away from the, the phone for a minute. Inmates being held inside the Federal Dirksen building are quickly evacuated from an underground garage. Thousands of traders standing outside the Chicago Stock Exchange after evacuations there. Within minutes of the situation in New York, the ripple effect was being felt in downtown Chicago. Right in the middle of the meeting, they just uh, came on the loudspeaker and evacuated the whole building. We were here at DePaul Center. Within an hour, dozens of businesses evacuated, creating huge traffic backups. People began using their cell phones in droves, trying to find out what was going on. It was just a panic. People were running. I heard the security telling everybody um, shut down different floors and the elevators and things. People crying on the train, um, shaking. I'm a little terrified and nervous myself. You just, you just don't think. You know, I have uh, relatives in uh, New Jersey and Massachusetts and uh, relatives in New York and in New York. Security is at levels I've never seen before. No more cars are being allowed in the main parking garage near the terminal. Canine units are patrolling the terminal and concourses, making sure there are no threats to safety there. Cars are not being allowed to stop for any period of time in front of the terminals, although passenger cars are still being allowed to pull up, drop off, or pick up passengers. And Chicago police are supplementing the airport's private security at checkpoints. Indefinitely, all departures, not just from O'Hare, but Midway and every other commercial airport in the United States are suspended indefinitely. The number of casualties will be more than any any of us can bear, ultimately. Among the expected casualties, the very first firefighters and police officers who had responded to the scene, paramedics based further uptown hugged each other as they mobilized their triage units. This is a, a vicious attack upon New York. It's an attack upon America. The explosions shut down New York, with cars lined up on the West Side Highway, unable to go anywhere. Stretchers were lined up outside the hospitals. Thousands of people left on foot to cross bridges, hoping to get home safely to the outer boroughs. The search is underway for those who are behind these evil acts. I've directed the full resources of our intelligence and law enforcement communities to find those responsible and to bring them to justice. Describe how many people are actually down there working, trying to find people. People from all over, um, not only New York City Fire Department and the Police Department are involved, but people from other states, uh, from different counties, everyone's come together as a team down there. And the flames are still burning down there, so it's making things very difficult, you were saying. It's, it's really hard to breathe and see because the smoke is, you know, it's, it's everywhere. It's coming down the streets. Uh, as, as far as I know, World Trade Center number five was still in fire, and, and they're not sure if it's going to stand any longer. They're afraid it's going to fall. And a couple of the other buildings, we were actually stationed working out of the Brooks Brother building on Liberty Street, and while we were in there, it actually caught on fire. We were evacuated from that, so there's still a lot of debris floating around that's on fire, and it's, it's pretty dangerous for everyone down there.
You can't get out. Tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families. And, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand.
go. Shit, nobody mad at me. My father over there, so you know. Let's go. Everybody back. Oh my God. One the the street. Keep moving. Keep moving. Let's go. Let's go. Keep moving. Let's go. Let's go. Move back. Not moving further. Everybody move. Everybody. Keep, keep moving. Everybody has questions. It has been another explosion.